So, what'll it be, sir? Oh my What's God. your poison? <laughs> what do you fancy? I thought I'd do something that actually it's time to... Whoa! I thought I'd do something that it's actually time to do, which is try your gin. Yes, I agree. It's all I've got, anyway. <laughs> I'm, 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 it's not a big choice. All right, um, I'd love to, yes. Let's give Two types go. of gin available from James Gin, sir. There's yes. regular Asian parsnip and Asian parsnip navy strength. I would recommend, if I may, that you begin by tasting the regular Asian parsnip. I'll give it a go. Is there a way to taste gin, which I presume you're familiar with now you make one? Well, actually, you say that. As far as I know, the way to taste gin is... Well, I always just make it into a gin and tonic. Yeah. But... I think you're supposed to put it into a small shot glass, thusly, yeah. and simply then do a lot of sniffing it and talking and sniffing oh, right. and looking. And then you just drink it. All right. So here, a regular Asian parsnip. Yes. James. Yes. Asian, you can call me barman. Asian uh, parsnip. Yes. Well, this was my idea. I can't claim to have created this gin because I teamed up with a distiller, Hugh Anderson, of the Downton Distillery. But I came up with the idea, and the idea was I wanted to combine something very English and rather, to be honest, dowdy, miserable, damp parsnip. It's a very, very British sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, with the excitement of Asian cooking, i.e. spices. And therefore, we arrived at the combination of parsnip with spices, and from that we arrived at the title Asian Parsnip. So Asian Parsnip isn't a thing. You've just combined Asian because it sounds exotic to some ears and different. It's, it's shorthand for spiciness. Right, and parsnip because... It's a parsnip. It does have parsnip in it. There is parsnip in it. Oh yes, right. and you will taste it. What do I do when... Th this is weird. I'm taking <laughs> lessons from you on tasting gin. I've probably absorbed more gin than many people. I think do that. Do that, like do that. Do I have to talk bollocks? Well, talk I'm, bollocks. Well, I'm, I'm getting um, uh, pencil shavings and cat's feet um, with a faint note of regret. Perfect. Lovely. But do you get, I mean, seriously, because I don't want people to think that this is just marketing bullshit. You can, you, that slight sort of sweet nuttiness that you associate with Christmas and roasted parsnips is there. I'm going to punch you if you say that ever again. Quite hard. Move but your nose me, around a bit. Enough. Ginny? It is Ginny. It is actually distinctive. I'm getting um, that, you know, that woody bit you get in parsnip? Mm. I am getting that. Yeah, it is definitely and there. I promise never to say anything that serious about anything foody or drinky again in my yeah. life. But there is a, yeah. If you say woody again, you're, you're I might have to reconsider our friendship. You see, gin isn't fighting juice like lager. Or cider. But what if we fight on this now? Just saying, if it, if it sparks a fight from us, because I said Woody and you said Asian parsnip, it is actually, um, uh, honestly... Be as honest as you like. It is a little bit It is distinctive. Different. See, this is what I love about gin. Distinctive is a good word. Is that, you know a lot of drinks. Mm -hmm. Frankly, I can't tell the difference a lot of times. Mm -hmm. But gin, even though there's only a tiny amount of the botanicals that make it up, it actually makes an enormous difference. I'm sort of with you because the problem I have with vodka, I know it's very trendy and people like to intellectualise it, but it is basically a neutral grain spirit. It's actually what gin is mm. before it becomes gin. So that's what you've got, vodka with stuff in it. It vodka is vodka is... with stuff in it. It's, not, it's, it's technically rectified gin rather than distilled. It's redistilled, but it's already a spirit at the start that is flavoured. Whereas vodka is really something for cleaning your kitchen with. Or de-icing your car windscreen in very well. places like northern Russia. I've got another question. What's in the other bottle, by the way? The same stuff, but at a greater strength. That's the Navy Strength? Yes. Do we try that? Yes. The interesting thing about Navy Strength, I say interesting and I use that word very, very loosely. When you say interesting, <laughs> it's I not quiver interesting. Inter Does the interesting thing take 40 minutes to explain? No, it's that... Are you sure? That is all, nice. It is nice, isn't it? Mm. it is, I mean, it is a little bit different and some yeah. people find it a bit challenging and I get that, but I'm, I'm interested in being challenged especially by my own product, which is available now to buy from James Jim. Which camera do I look at while saying this? <laughs> Crying. JamesJim.com. <laughs> if it's that a was product, me. It's only it available called. online. You cannot it buy called. it in the shops. Um, the interesting thing about making a Navy Strength gin yeah. is that you use, it's got exactly the same botanicals in it as regular Asian parsnip, but we discovered that you actually have to reduce the volume of botanicals that you put in because the, the 
greater power of the alcohol in leaching the flavours out of them actually made it unpleasant. Oh, that's got it can smell that's quite now navy strength the difference is that's 57 percent volume this is 40 what is it 40 percent and the there are other you can get navy strength rum as well for example basically drinks that were available on sailing ships had to be of a proof that meant if they were spilled in action by the impact of a cannonball for example they could mix with the gunpowder that was also stored in barrels but the gunpowder would still ignite because regular gin is not inflammable. The Navy strength, if you put it on a spoon and put a match to it, it will burn. You know a lot of what the Navy says is. It, yeah, rubbish. Yeah, it's not true. But it came from a historian. Cool, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's got a bit of heat in it. Um, actually, it does change the flavour though. It's it more does. subtle, but it, it lasts longer. Oh, mm. That's because it's that's... simply. It's simply more alcoholic, and although it is more expensive, and it has to be because we have to pay a lot more duty on it, it does get you into the lifeboat of the legendary sea shanty more quickly, please drink responsibly. I don't mind having an unalcoholic drink, if then again I quite like it, because it leaves more, more time for the drinking an alcoholic drink later in the evening. I've never seen you have a non-alcoholic drink. I have tried non-alcoholic beers, of which there are many, some of which I really like. But non-alcoholic spirits always fail because they don't have that volatility. They don't fill your nose and your face, do they? So they're just inert. They're not, they don't I've light up I've, in your mouth. I've never had a, can you actually There's have a lots, non-alcoholic? Lots of non-alcoholic gins. But they can't call it gin, surely. They, they, they can't call it spirits. Gin. They call it non-alcoholic gin, I believe, on the bottle. But it just doesn't. Work. It doesn't come to life because this relies on the difference in flavour between these two, same botanicals, okay, in different quantities, is the increased volatility of this because exactly. there's more alcohol in it. Yes. And it tastes different. You're right, it does. It, it, I it, prefer it in it, that form. It is a different version of the same flavour, mm -hmm. I think, if you see I what I mean. I prefer it in that. Not just because it's stronger. Here's another thing for you. I'm tasting it. Is that what you do with wine? You go... <laughs> Oh God, if you do that, it, drink responsibly. That is... Um, drink responsibly, drink this. Quite a vivid drink, that, James. Would you like a bottle? Yes. Thank you very much. Yes, you can pay online. Would Please you like say. a longer one of these? I would like you to make me one of your legendary mm. gin and tonics, but I'd really like it in a, in a sort of balloon glass with some interesting floral... Well, I can help you ...design out. on it. Let uh, us change places. Why don't you become okay. the customer I'll and I'll become, become the, the customer. Right. Okay. Are you ready? Yes, you have to say, what will it be, sir? What will it, what will it be, sir? Well, do you know, I quite fancy a navy strength uh, Asian parsnip with tonic. Very glad. Very glad you said that, because um, that's what I've got. Right. I should construct a gin and tonic. That's, that's exactly the glass I meant. Exactly like that. Vivid, isn't it? Yeah. That's amazing. You know, I, I had a vision of that glass. And you're not really rude it. about them, are you? And I'm no, disappointed. no, I love them. Damn. Zog gave me those. I'm they're glad I was painted and I was hoping you were going to go, oh, they're really awful. And then I didn't... Oh, I've got hiccups. Zog Wait, is I've got an old friend of ours from the days when... James, the oh. Navy strength has given me the hiccups. Wait. I thought you were going to do a sort of declamatory belch to no, get rid of it. No, it's curing my hiccups. Oh. Um, right, ice. This is how to make a gin and tonic. You need just a ton of ice. This should have some music on it. Etc. I much prefer gin and tonic in a, a bowl rather than any other sort of glass. I agree. What do you want? Ooh, what would you recommend? Barbara? Well, I recommend, I think there's a, a more vivid flavour in the Navy strength. But then you definitely get the, the, the sort of woodier, earthier tones coming out of the standard strength one. I'll have, I'll try a bit of your Navy strength, please. Right. Um, how I mix a gin and tonic is... Um, I know. <laughs> because once you put the ice in, you can't see how much gin you've got. Yeah. So I count to three. I go, one, two, three. Obviously, sometimes... I leave longer between the numbers. And also tip the bottle up further. One, two, three. Ooh, Good technique. And then, tonic. I'm just plain, I don't like, don't like a fancy tonic. I, I've got to say, having experimented at some length with my own gin in order to check that the uh, mm. recipe is absolutely correct, I've, I've found that regular Schweppes or regular Fever Tree, not <laughs> the flavoured ones, but just the straightforward. Because you've wasted hours and hours 
faffing about getting these botanicals and flavours right. Why mix it up by having something that tastes of sherbet bonbons in it? Exactly. Do you like this long? I like them long. Yes. The only thing I... I ooh, stylish. Très chic. Um, the only thing I would... I, I, I can accept the argument for diet or low-cal tonic if you find the regular ones a bit too sticky. <clears throat> I've got another question. Well, let's just try this as a gin and tonic, which is the proper way to drink okay, it. Okay, so this is this is a one tin gin and tonic. Yeah, it's I'd have it. I'd, I've made it slightly too long, but as this is fifty-seven percent, I've allowed us a bit of headroom. This must be gripping for the viewers. Mm -hmm. Two men having a drink. No, I've got another conversation there with you. In a oh, okay, I've got a bloody good question. It's the question the world is asking. Well, that's all right. Isn't that's it? good air. Mm. Are you ready? Yes. You and I work with on another thing that we do with another tall fat man. Yes. Now, habitually, he drinks rosé wine. Mm -hmm. And he's making a lager. Yes. You, habitually, if you're honest, you, you usually would drink a white wine or a beer. On, a, on tour, yes. On tour. Okay, let's say so tour drinks. Tour drinks, yes. He drinks rosé mm -hmm. exclusively. You drink white wine. And occasionally a beer, yes. I drink gin and tonic. Yes. He is making a lager. Mm -hmm. You're making a gin and tonic. Mm -hmm. What the hell am I going to make? Yeah. Um, tea bags? You drink quite a lot of tea. I can't kick you under this counter because it's solid. I don't know what I'm going to make. I need to make a drink. But anyway, I know. Well, Why don't you make cider? I live in Herefordshire everywhere the bucket makes cider. Yeah, I know, but yours would be Richard Hammond's fighting cider. You could call it driving god. So yes, you probably shouldn't call it. Not a good idea. No, that, the no. whole driving drinking thing. No, is, um, stay, stay clear of that. That goes down well. That's it's all right, good. isn't it? Another thing that annoys me. Apart from me talking, you mean? Well, yeah, yes. a few things there are that annoying, but that does annoy me a bit. I've been drinking gin for a long time, and now not before. You know, gin's been around for mother's ruin ever and ever and ever, but it wasn't fashionable. When I started, no, it was a bit really of a, was. It, it was, was a an weird. old person's drink. Yeah, I started drinking gin and tonic because I really like it. it doesn't give me a hangover. It just makes me happy. I like it. It's a, I love the. I would say I like that. the subtlety of the flavour, but the intensity of it at the same time. I love gin, and yet now it's become every fashionably bearded denim jacket, fashionable boot wearing hipster is drinking this stuff. People, Even people are making it. Yes. Well, I am a hipster, obviously. You well, would you that. stop stealing my stuff? It's like waistcoats, gin. I haven't worn a waistcoat. Yeah, but people, when you, I mean, you like more broadly. Like everybody, stop well, stealing broadly, my stuff. But more broadly if, if wearing a waistcoat. If being short becomes fashionable, which I have been doing for a long time, which is about the only thing I've got left, what am I? I'm short, I like wearing a waistcoat, and I like drink gin. Drink, drink gin, drinking gin. Yes. That's it, that's all I've got. Well, two of those have gone, they've been hijacked. You like crashing things. That hasn't become fashionable yet. That's a good point, yet. if that becomes a fashion. Although I've, I've, I've had a, a light bin that's recently, yes. which, for so which that, I apologise. Bloody hell, so that's gone as well. Yes, I wouldn't have done it deliberately, and I certainly didn't do it to try and steal any of your um, yeah, thunder or, or your uh, USP. Mm. So in essence, what I'm saying is, stop stealing my stuff. Anyway. Okay. Well, I haven't been, I did used to wear a knitted waistcoat many years ago, but I stopped because Frankly, my other half put it in the bin. A knitted waistcoat is a tank top. No, no, because it had buttons and it, it, and it was tailored like a waistcoat. It was, and it was very, it was almost like felted. It's a tank top. It's a tank top. Tank tops are fine. The other thing that I've always liked, and that's become fashionable, along with the same people who you know, like fashionable beards and gin and waistcoats, bloody motorcycles. I started riding bikes 36 years ago. When we were not liked, we were outsiders. They didn't like us. And that's why I started doing it. And now every bloody dentist in Kensington is setting off on a Dakar-ready BMW GS to cross the wilds of Kensington to work because bikes have become fashionable. That's another thing I love. It must be very difficult, viewers, to be burdened with a <laughs> radical personality. <laughs> no, it's just been with a fashion leader. That's the problem, you see. I will say this much. I will say it reluctantly because you're a mate. I've known you many decades actually, mm. um, but ad ad admitting to you being 
making a good job of something is annoying. This is it's bloody good, actually. Thank you. The credit has to go to Hugh Anderson at Downton Distillery, who perfected it over many, many weeks, whilst I, you know, I said, here's my idea, Hugh, it's parsnips, because they're dowdy in English, but it's with spices from Asia, because they're exciting and we all like Asian food. I met a very nice couple on the River Test, who make a gin. This feels like a long one. And when it came to the botanicals, I mean, the River Test is a chalk stream. It's immaculate, clear water. It's beautiful. Mm. Um, and alongside the banks grows a key botanical for that gin. Which is? And this is at the heart of what they made. And this one, gold, it's like one of the best British gins ever. And I met them and I tried it. It's beautiful. And the botanical is it's incredibly rare because of the purity of the water alongside which it grows. But what is it? I can't remember. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> was it angelica root? No, I don't know. I can't remember. It was like a meadow. Nettles? No. Dandelion? No. But, I don't know. Uh, uh, I can't remember. Uh, what's that thing you rub on a stinging nettle wound? What's it? Dock leaf? No. No? Wild samphire? No. One of the nicest botanicals you can add to a gin is the one that Richard Hammond can't remember. Gin makers, take note. Wait, I'm waiting to say the cheesy one and then we'll end. Cheers. Yeah. You know you want to. Thank you for watching. And thank you for your custom if you're a buyer. Anyway, your check's in the post. Cheers. Sorry, could you edit that out? Okay.